special meeting, special meeting of the North Smithfield Town Council for January 6th, 2020. It's called the order. First item is chairman of pledge, Madam Clerk.
and who gets hurt by it is a good candidate that's being hurt by it. So the same thing happens. It could be erosion. You don't plant enough trees, you could get erosion, and it causes flooding in people's houses, or it damages their driveways. Who's going to worry about that? It's the homeowner that's stuck. So going back to the, uh, the solar issue, Greenville Road, for example, with the Waterbury Hill and the green development, that hill is very steep. There's a lot of ledge, and when the ground freezes, that water just rolls off that hillside. Extra trees are needed for a buffer. I think the ordinance says a 100-foot buffer. You need more trees in that buffer to hold the soil down and to keep things from running off that hillside. It's going to be a problem. If you don't have a good buffer on that hillside, you're going to have erosion problems, and you're going to have complaints from, from residents that live on Greenville Road. So, you know, what do you do? This, uh, you know, who's going to watch for this? The council, the last council, it's unfortunate, the last council president made a commitment. He was going to oversee the green development project to make sure nothing goes wrong. So the question today is, is today's council going to try to oversee the project of green development? Or are they going to nominate somebody like the town planner or the building inspector or maybe even the conservation commission to be watching what goes, what happens at the redevelopment on Waterbury Hill. Are they going to be checking the silk fences? It was a big problem for Dollar Village, those silk fences. They always got damaged. So the question is, who's going to be watching what goes on? We don't have a uh, you know, zoning board because they're excluded from the Waterbury process. It's going to be somebody from the council or the council nominating someone to oversee what's going on. It's unfortunate. In closing, I guess, you know, we need strong ordinances, and we need to enforce those ordinances. Not just writing the ordinance, someone's going to enforce the ordinance. So in 2020, you know, is the council ready to do that? So, and also the council needs to set a good example. I guess you've got to set a good example and give direction to the planning board and the zoning board. You've got to say, this is the way we should do business. And I think it sets the tone for the planning board and the zoning board to work with the council and move in a certain direction. I hate to see the planning board and zoning going one way and the council going another way. I think we've got to work together. So thank you for listening. Jeff Water. Jeff Water, Six Country Way. Um, I have my speech right now. I have a couple things called out from the comprehensive plan I'm going to share with you after this for consideration. Um, I'm also speaking on agenda item 5, the one-to-one -one replacement of trees. When I learned that this was up for reconsideration, I was extremely disheartened. I'm going to specifically against my, uh, address my comments to anyone reconsidering their vote and encourage you all to vet, vote against removing I strongly believe removing this item from the ordinance fails to comply with the town's comprehensive plan, which was recently accepted in April 2019. In the plan, we have sections on economic development, open space for recreation, and energy, natural hazards, and climate change. The third goal that is outlined in the economic development plan simply states, strive to balance economic development and preservation of the town's natural resources in open space. Balance here is the key. In the open space and recreation section, there's a paragraph on page 118 under open space and conservancy. And this reads, in North Smithfield, open space and conservancy actions should be focused on the preservation of critical natural resources, including but not limited to, and it goes on to list a large amount of areas, but it also includes trees, which include remaining tracts of forest and street trees, and natural vegetation. As we currently do not have an active conservation commission, I feel that the responsibility of preserving these forests is now more important that we, as a community, oversee it and keep an even closer eye on this item. The second goal that is in the uh, open space and recreation states, protect the town's natural resources while preserving rural areas. The policy that goes along with this states, prioritize areas for conservation based on historical development patterns while redeveloping existing commercial areas. I'm just gonna repeat that last part. 
redeveloping existing commercial areas. In reference to the energy section, it outlines and recognizes the impacts of climate change. Trees and solar panels both effectively combat this, so I believe, again, it is finding the balance between the two. Now, as far as part of the ordinance, this will only apply to those projects requesting dimensional relief. The six acres, or 30% of land, or less, whichever is less. For reference, for those that have a hard time with area, six acres is approximately the front of the Walmart parking lot and the Aldous parking lot. Anchor Subaru area parking lot, that's 10 and a half acres, give or take, plus or minus. Since my time on the planning board, which has been for the back, about the past three years, we have only seen one major land development application that has exceeded six acres. And this application was submitted as a conservation development. The majority of other applications have been under six acres or within existing developed areas. I believe that the council is weighing out the economic benefits against the environmental impact. While yes, the town would potentially benefit economically for the next 25 to 30 years, the environment would suffer for even longer and become detrimental to future generations. One of the reasons behind asking for the moratorium was to ensure we protected and preserved the environment. We wanted to encourage continued development of already developed areas, which again brings me back to the comprehensive plan. To ensure this balance, the one-to-one -one replacement was added. It lessens the burden on the town if trees in Pachuco Park were to fall and needed to be replaced. It provides beautification all throughout town, so if trees on places like North Main Street or anywhere else in town fell, they could be replaced without economic burden to the town to replace these. Just think of anywhere in town that could potentially use trees. It comes at no cost with a one-to-one -one replacement. There have been plenty of studies outlining the positive impacts of forests and trees that play in human health. I will not begin to outline them here because a simple Google search will get you more than enough information. In closing, we need to be smart, and we need to be, find balance. And removing the clause tips that scale away from balance that this town and our comprehensive plan are striving for. For your consideration, I do have highlighted portions of the comprehensive plan that I just outlined for your further discussion when you get to this item. Because they weren't on the town website previously. 
Uh, if you recall, when the bids were authorized to go out, the bidders had to come in in person and sign for a CD of the specs, which I found odd at the time. Uh, I did subsequently, this past November, file an after request for those bid specs, and they are now posted on the town website. After reviewing those bid specs, I'm absolutely convinced that something is very afoul here. Something's really, really wrong with this picture. You pay that architect $80,000, he asked for authorization to draw up bid specs for a $900,000 project, and the bids came in anywhere from 2.4 to 2.77 million. If any of you know an architect, I defy you to ask an architect, is it possible to make an error of that magnitude on such a small project? And you're going to hear a resounding no, it isn't. So my theory is somebody asked him to do that, and to draft bid specs that more were in line with a full renovation of uh, Bushy School the Bushy building, rather than a partial recommendation. So um, I, I have consulted with other people in the profession. I've had them look at the bid specs. Um, I've read them myself as well, but I'm not an architect, so that's why I relied on the expertise of others. And they're of the same opinion. Something very, very wrong. The fact that you've got four bids for 2.4 to 2.7 should be screaming at you there's something very, very wrong. We paid $80,000 plus to that gentleman to draw, up, to draw up those bid specs and documents. And this is what we got for it. Um, I, 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 I think there's a lot of questions that have to be addressed to him so he can explain how those bids came in where they did. And, and I, I want the opportunity to ask him some questions about those bid specs myself. So uh, rather than just rely on, I have been calling and checking with the clerk to see when the architect was coming and what the meeting date was, because Mr. Vagney at the December meeting said, I'm going to call him the next morning and find out when he's available. And for weeks, she never had an answer. And then recently, she had an answer and said it's the 21st. I'd like her to, to, I'd like to suggest to the council that you direct her to send an email to the architect and confirm his availability for that date before everybody shows up on the 21st and finds out that he's not here or there was a miscommunication or something's come up. Um, I, 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 uh, I won't go any further tonight other than to say, if you see nothing wrong with this picture, I question why you have that short vision. I think some of you may have just approved those bid specs without reading them. They were 500 and some odd pages. I wouldn't expect you to read them. But Mr. Vadney did say that the, the uh, recommendation from the NDRTF was to accept those bid specs. With this type of discre discrepancy in the bids, it's your obligation to represent the taxpayers to find out why we didn't get $80,000 worth of product from that, from that uh, architect. And I don't want to hear, you know, oh, it's, it's done, you know, we need to move on. Um, when, you, when, you, when the council previously, a couple of years ago, submitted a, a, a amended the budget after the deadline in the charter, char, which they could amend the budget by, uh, in July they added $100,000 to the budget, and um, we asked them to reconsider that and uh, rebate the property owners proportionately the extra tax that they paid. We were told, oh, you can't do that because it's going to waste $11,000 of taxpayers' money. Mr. Rapko and I came before the council and showed them the math and said, no, it isn't $11,000 to pay all of the bills, it's 4000 And the finance director agreed with our numbers. And even then, oh, we can't waste $4,000. Well, now we're wasting $80,000. And if the architect was told to do something by a client, and I thought the client was the council, but now I'm not too sure that was the case because you approved, one authorized him to do one thing, and he did quite another. And he made changes in those plans, too. And if you read your own motion, you voted to authorize him to, to draw up the bid specs in accordance with the plans and the budgets that we presented on January 22nd. You didn't take that action until the following meeting in February, because he had given you a budget that night in January, I believe. He showed it on a slide, and I said, no, a detailed budget. Do you have that? And then you were going to wait for something else. I can't remember exactly what it was. I can look at the video and pr provoke my memory. But the problem is, this is not a normal. This is not a normal range that a budget would come in at. He projected a budget of 3.5 million for Kendall Dean, and three of the four bids that came in for Kendall Dean were under 3.5 million, and only one was over. 
So how can that same architect who used an estimator, according to the statements that he made in front of you on the 22nd, be so off on the second project? There's something very wrong here. Very, very wrong. I, again, I just want to hope that one of you will make a recommendation that the uh, clerk email Mr. Sakosha and confirm his availability for that meeting. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak on the U.S. Okay. Slide of Nelson Field Town Council sitting as a Board of License Commissioners. 